It's Ash from All Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. Let's talk about steering your gutter perch. Since the advent of bioceramics, you know, going single cone, this has made life so much easier. So, but there's still, you know, you can still have some problems. And in this case specifically, I wanted to provide this to you because I troubleshoot a bunch of issues that are fairly common. Doesn't happen all the time, but I'll tell you when it does, you're kind of like, ah, frustration. But here we're going to talk about just a couple simple tips using the single cone technique. What I'm going to do is let's just keep walking through the case as we talk about it. I've got two cases. We're going to talk about a molar, kind of what not to do. And then we'll talk about a central incisor, which has a completely different feel for searing the gutter percha. So what I'm doing here is I'm just placing my cones into this maxillary first molar. We finished the, the stage two that we did this as an emergency treatment. And then we did stage two. And then in between, he actually, interestingly enough, we actually got a comb beam for this case because I wanted to make sure that MB2 joined MB1. Now, I didn't get the, the comb beam to help with finding MB2. It wasn't that. It was really do these two canals join to make sure that we've got everything. So what we're going to do is we're just placing our cones. We open the distal buckle, the mesial buckle, distal buckle to a 3506. We kept MB2 at just a, 30, a 2507. It joins MB1, so it's not a big issue. And then we open the palatal canal to a large, to a 4505. And you can see the cone placed here. So depending on the on the canals, I'll put BC sealer onto the cones as well as inject it into the coronal portion. Now, as you watch, as I was talking about, you probably saw me take a 15 file and go up and down in the canal. And that's important because what it does is it breaks the air bubble underneath the BC sealer because you just you know, inject a, a liquid on top of just air. The air needs to get out of there because what I've done many many years ago is I tried to place my cone on top of that and it just wouldn't seal all the time. So over the past two years, I've been using the Fast Pack from Eight Teeth, and what I was showing you here is that these tips. So depend, it doesn't matter what most of the, these electronic things and electronic heat sources you can use now. You can bend the tip, so that's what I'm doing here. So I'm using a smaller tip. I wouldn't recommend using smaller tips, but you can bend them to make your life so much easier. So in this video here, what I wanted to show you is that this is the, I'll heat, gutta percha melts at 200 degrees Celsius, so it's set for 255. See the thickness of this tip? You know, a friend of mine, Megan, or Reagan, sorry, taught me many years ago, just use a really large tip, it carries a lot of heat. And if we're only searing the orifice, you'll watch me, this is really helpful because what happens I find is that different, different dental clinics, you, you know, these burn, they get old, they burn out, and then you're left with the skinny little wee ones and they just never seem to work. So if you don't have a heat source, I do recommend, they're not paying me for this, they sent this to me a couple years ago, I've used it almost every day. I love it. It is by far the probably the best one I've used ever and I've used so many of them from AT, so I'm very grateful. We've taken our comb fit radiograph and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start searing. And what I'll do is I'll start at the cable surface margin. So I'll cut the cones off, just the excess that are sticking outside the tooth. And that allows us to see the individual cones just a little bit easier. Now, do I do that all the time? No, but in this case, it was kind of, you know, I mean, look at it, it looks like a bunch of spaghetti noodles. So we're gonna sear those off. And one of the key tips is I'm going to cut towards tooth structure. That is the number one tip that I've learned. Cut towards tooth structure. And then you have an, a, a positive stop and then you're allowed to, you know, then you can bring that cone up. Uh oh, for making it to this point in the video. And I just wanted to offer you this. This is our root canal, like an endodontist course. It's a course that, you know, if you felt alone during your root canal journey, if you felt stuck, you can't get down a canal, you block your ledge. If you want a system based root canal course that's not gonna break the bank, go ahead and check us out at allthingsendo.ca. You'll learn the secrets that endodontists use every day and actually that I use every day. To get down cases so go ahead and check that out and you know the beauty that i love about of course we have a private facebook group we've got a whole bunch of people that are on there that are just you know place it's a safe place to, to post cases and questions and whatnot and learn from everything every day. anyways check us out all things under that soon. but watch what's going to happen soon so i'm going to cut towards two structure cut i'm going to cut the distal buckle off and then i'm still going to sear at the orifice I, can, I connect with the palate and like, oh, now comes out the palate. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to freak out. 
which I used to do because it's like, oh my gosh. So what I'm gonna do is lots of different options. What I did in this case, I just took my plugger and because I use an apical stop preparation, I mean, you can use a continuous continuous taper prep as well. I know that that gutta percha is not gonna fly out the end of my, of my preparation. I have absolute confidence, well, okay, 98% confidence that when I place that cone back down to length, it's going and it's not it's going exactly where I wanted it and it's not going too far. So that's the first tip. So don't don't freak, just take a deep breath. And then because what happens is that slows down the you know that if you pull that all the way out, that slows down, you know, the endo train. The endo train comes to a grinding halt, and then you know you have to find a new point. If you pull it out, you're like, ooh, should I find a new point? And that's what I love about doing the single cone technique, is that especially with an apical stop preparation, is that I place a cone to length. Boom, that's it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just now I'm going, I'm tackling each orifice individually. This case is interesting because it becomes a mess. And I wanted to share this with you because, you know, when you're starting off in endo, these things become a mess. And I'll show you how I tackle it. So I've seared off all of the orifices. Now, does this normally happen? No. Does it happen once in a while? Yeah, heck yeah. And... What I'm gonna, you know, you can always probably have heard. So I've got this ball of gutta percha in the orifice, and I know that you've been down this road. So what you can do is lots of things. One, you can try to heat it up and then let it cool and stick to the heat source. That has never worked for me ever in my life. So what I'll do is I'll take a thin little plugger. These are Buchanan pluggers. You don't need them. I don't even need them. I've just been using it for 20 years. That's what I started using. And I'll just flick that thing out of there. You can cool it down. What you can do is you can actually cool this down with water uh, and then maybe heat your heat plugger tip and make it attach. I've never really had success with that. Taking a second, packing, and then you know, you know, know, just using another plugger to get that stuff out of there, then we're good. So we're not finished yet, but I can tell you it's that using this technique versus thermal, you know, vertical compaction or continuous, continuous, condensation technique this is so much easier so what we're going to do now is i'm going to take my air water syringe i'm going to push both buttons i'm going to take my finger put it over the preparation and i'm going to hit hit the hit the gas on both both buttons and what that does is it sends a a jet stream here i was trying a yeah, jet stream of air you can see air and water coming and watch my air water syringe tip it flows all over the place now so we clean all that out and then what we're going to do is i'm going to heat up again just the top top part of my gutta percha i'm just taking a little bit away just a little bit and again can you you can see i'm cutting towards two structure i'm kind of like tearing it i'm trying to compare it to like you know wrapping paper or pat wrapping paper or something like that but it doesn't really compare that well so I'll cut it towards two structure and then that's it heat towards something to cut and my tip is not sharp it's not that it's just giving it something to stop against and then i'll take my my plugger and then just like alina say says i'm doing exactly the way he suggested um is just kind of burnish it clear you know burnish the gutter percha right to the levels edges of the orifice and then that's it It's such a beautiful, simple technique. We're not placing a post in this case. We're just placing a composite core, and then we're actually, this is a very, I find, crown like thing in these cases, this is a very deep MO, DO, just to DO amalgam. I mean, there's a bit of an overhang, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna send this to my friend to crown like thing rather than me do it, because um, they're, they're challenging and I'm good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna air water rinse again, clean it out, and then we'll just show you the kind of the final result, and then we'll show you our final PA. So it's a you know this was a little more kind of a fussy case, but that's pretty much at the end of it how these typically roll. And the, you know if you haven't switched to a single cone technique, I don't get paid by anybody. There's lots of different sealers on the market. I don't get paid by any anybody to market these. If you haven't gone to switch to it, I would highly recommend you thinking about it and then trying on to extract the teeth. So there's our case there. So there's MB1, MB2, distal buckle, and then the palate. And we're gonna etch and then we're on. So 
The next case we're going to talk about, okay, so this is a very interesting case. This is a retreat from a thermophil. Put it in the comments below if you want to watch the three the retreat. I don't I don't do a lot of re I don't put up I don't post a lot of re I do a lot of retreats. I don't post a lot of retreats because my page doesn't really get a lot of hits for retreats, but if you want to see it, I can, I can, this is a very interesting retreat because I wasn't expecting to see a thermophil in here. Anyways, this is another, so we're using the same tip, same, but this is a different technique in the anterior teeth. Watch, I'm going to slice it right across. Boom, just like that. And that is it. So again, I'm using that towards two structure. What I'm doing here is I'm just heating up the corona portion just a little bit. I'm not taking anything away. I'm just going to heat up a little bit of gutta percha. The idea is to heat it up, melt some of that top part, and then just kind of condense it in. And then that's it. This is a very interesting case because the previous clinician, I'm not judging them at all. I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, but this case is interesting because the perforation almost happened towards the lingual. And usually it's towards the buckle. I've almost perforated through the buckle. You know, I mean, when I started my career, been down that road. Um, so the retreat, you know, if, I, if we do get posting it, it's very interesting. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with the air water syringe. We're just going to take... You know, hit both buttons, hit the jets. There's still a little bit of BC sealer there. So what I did do, I was like, you know what? Let's try using a micro brush. That didn't work. I try this once in a while. Like I do different things once in a while. I'm like, oh, let's try, let's try scrubbing it with the micro brush. And actually, where that BC sealer is is in where that perforation towards the lingual is. Now I think about it. So we're gonna use a little. We're gonna use a little scrub brush. Scrub that out. I've used this previously, it's been effective. We scrubbed that BC sealer out of there. It didn't, it was so-so in this case. So then I took my Eddy lookalike. I mean, look at this thing. If you haven't used one of these before, it's Sonic, it's cheap. Um, I, I love these tips. These are what I activate my irrigant with. Let me just back that up if you haven't seen one of those. Um, so what this is, it's a copy of the VDW Eddy tip. Just a Sonic scale, Sonic nylon tip. So it, I use it for activating my irrigants all the time. This is what I use. I've gone away from the endo activator. There's so many little videos online that show how this is. I mean, it's just crazy. Boom, booyah. Okay, so there is our tip. There's our gutter pressure point. Now you can see this is stage two of this because we did place calcium hydroxide in this case because it was another emergency visit. There's some composite, so we're probably gonna remove that. And then we're just going to place composite. This is a very high carries risk patient, so he's going down the high carries risk protocol. Anyways, I'm very grateful for you to be here. Thank you so much. I hope that was helpful. And uh, let me know if you want to see that retreat. And we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.